talk with someone on that very committee right now, Democratic Congressman Mike Quigley. He's from Illinois, of course, sitting on the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Good morning. Did you find the meeting with John Podesta helpful? Can you tell me anything you learned? Yeah, unfortunately, I can't reference uh, who has testified or will testify um, before the committee when it's in closed session. Uh, I, I did hear his public pronouncements about the president, and I found it uh, enlightening and enjoyable that, uh, that Mr. Stone wants to testify publicly. Uh, I want to encourage him to talk about this as much as he can publicly. There's no one here more than Mr. Stone who would rather have Roger Stone testify on prime time and answer critical questions about what he said last August. What so, was his relationship with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and Guccifer? And how did he know that Mr. Podesta was next in the barrel and that there was political dynamite using his own words about the Clintons that was about to come out from this group? So you confirm, though, that Roger Stone will be testifying before the committee? No, I'm not doing that. I'm encouraging okay. him to, to follow up on what he said, that uh, he wants to testify publicly. Uh, I'm just commenting on Mr. Stone's words. If he wants to testify publicly, again, no one would be happier than I would. Just because of all the things and all the tweets that you referenced that took place last summer. Uh, his, and Congressman, his, why would he be testifying behind closed doors? If he, it's not as if, it, it, one would assume he doesn't have classified clearance. It's not like we'd have anything classified that he would be discussing with the committee. Why not have it out in the public? Look, uh, I, I can't, again, I can't reference who will or won't testify in a closed setting. All I'm suggesting is that uh, right. do you see I would any, love to take him up on Do you see any that. reason, do you see any reason for someone like Roger Stone to need to testify in closed session before your committee? I think the decisions on who closed who testifies under closed settings or open settings is made on a bipartisan basis by leadership on both sides. So I'll leave that decision to them. I'm only uh, encouraged that he wants to testify publicly, and I would love to be the first one asking those questions. Do you think on some level that folks are concerned about what he would say in public? Um, he's known to grandstand. I mean, we all know over his time in the public eye. Look, uh, as a person who was a criminal defense attorney for 10 years, someone with an ego like that, uh, you give them a public stand, they tend to open up. And that's what we need. We need to know, the American public has a right to know what Mr. Stone's relationship was with Julian Assange. He says he knew him. He says they communicated. He said he knew that these emails were coming. If we know that the Russians were the ones who attacked our community. That was revealed in January by the Intel community. And we know that WikiLeaks was the one that released it. This is Mr. Stone's talking about his open relationship and good relationship with that same entity, following the president, talking about encouraging WikiLeaks to further hack Mrs. Clinton's emails. So uh, look, it, it all points in an obvious direction that there was some sort of cooperation as admitted by Mr. Stone. Let's get all the details. I, I will put you in the category of if you had the power to decide, you would have him testify in a public format, correct? Oh, oh, absolutely. And, so and then, please, please let me ask the first questions. I, I, if, I, if I had the power, maybe I would allow you after I get the first question. But let me ask you this then. Are these decisions political? Who can testify in public and who, would, who is, testifies in private? In fairness, I don't think that they are, you know? I mean, we're, here we are just talking openly, but the fact of the matter is, again, those are decisions that so far have been made on a bipartisan basis by leaders of the intel community. Whether or not someone testifies, whether they testify in open and closed session, I, you know, I'm going to respect those decisions. I'm, I'm, surely, I'm just enthused that the person, one of the people I would most like to see testify uh, is publicly saying that he wants to come clean on all these things. Let me ask you one more thing about John Podesta. Um, I want to play a soundbite. I spoke with one of your colleagues, Jackie Spear, yesterday, and here is what Congresswoman Jackie Spear had to say about Podesta going in. This was before he went in uh, for his testimony. Listen to this. This is yet again uh, an effort by um, my Republican colleagues to divert the investigation into areas um, that are not going to be 
probative or necessarily helpful in determining whether or not the Russians uh, infiltrated into our election and whether or not uh, Trump campaign operatives uh, were wittingly or unwittingly involved uh, with Russia in that infiltration. Do you think hearing from someone like John Podesta is a diversion, is a political diversion? Uh, the Democrats and Republicans have uh, witnesses that they've requested on their election. Uh, I, I think that the, the, the witnesses that we have asked make sense to move forward on the investigation. Do, do I wonder about some of the Republican choices without mentioning anyone in particular? Sure. But, you know, in the final analysis, we've got to figure this out. The House investigation has to go forward on a bipartisan basis. We have to get past the political divide. This is the most important investigation of our lifetime. But we've got to get past these uh, problems that we've had so far. Uh, I think we're moving forward on a positive basis. I'm going to take it on a positive side. Look at the optimism flowing from Cap